So we had Hurricane Debbie roll through a couple days ago, and in my neighborhood alone, we had I don't know how many mature hardwood trees drop. You know, we always hear people talk about the pine trees being the problem. They're so tall. Uh, people, people are very, very worried about those tall trees falling on their house. But the trees that fall tend to mostly be hardwoods, uh, especially hardwood trees that have a fairly large canopy. They kind of end up being like a sail. They catch a lot of wind and we have shallow roots on the hardwood trees here where I live. I'm in the Piedmont region. So uh, every time there's significant winds, uh, you can just see all these trees that have pulled up, uh, the root ball is exposed, that tap root snaps, um, and, uh, and it's just fallen right over. So in my neighborhood, we have a lot of blue tarp squares on people's roofs, and the roofers are going to be very happy. Uh, now, I was out of town when this hickory tree fell. I've driven by it, you know, one or two times a week for several years now. I was really sad about it. By the time I found out it fell, it had already been bucked into firewood sections. Um, really, really a bummer. I was hoping to, uh, I've been hoping for years now to get a, a pecan, especially, um, or a, a good shag bark hickory tree. Uh, this is not shag bark hickory, but it's, it's some subspecies of hickory. I need to verify what it is. Very, very hard, very, very dense. Uh, and the way that I've found to load these up in the truck that works really well, you saw in the last scene, is uh, is making kind of a, a series of, of steps, like ramps. Um, you find a couple different widths, and the good thing is that a firewood guy cut these up. Um, or, or, yeah, I'm not even gonna say a firewood guy, just a guy with a chainsaw cut these up, because they're all different heights. You know, one of them is maybe 12 inches, the next one is 16, the one after that's two feet. You know, they're, they're all different. So I was able to find enough to make a pretty consistent ramp uh, and, uh, and load them up. That way you're never responsible for holding the full weight of the round. You, uh, that is what I try to avoid at all costs. And it, my preference is you give me a, a, a round that's twice that height and, and I think that's easier than lifting this round right here. Because with, um, uh, with a log, with a big log like that, um, once you flip it up, you're good. Because the other end of the log, you kind of make the middle of the log the fulcrum, and the other end counteracts the weight that you're trying to lift. And, and it's like, uh, it's a big mechanical advantage. These can be pretty tough. This height is okay. Um, I'm having to lift more than I want to with this height but it's, it's not something that's gonna hurt my back. The only time I've ever hurt my back doing this is when somebody cut maybe, maybe 14 or 15 inch uh, rounds and there was no way to uh, tip them up into the truck and I had to just lift each one. Even using this method here, they all fell just short of my tailgate and I had to lift five or six of them um, full weight, just lifting it up, and, and that was uh, that was not great. So these rounds can be pretty tough to lift, but it's almost like you want them to be too big rather than too small, because then you can tip them up onto the tailgate. Uh, and then at the end there, you know, you've got to kind of rearrange them, so um, you don't want to be stuck with the biggest round at the end. I kind of rearranged them, so at the end, I'm moving the smallest round. Uh, and this one, of course, is going to be lifted the full the full height, but it, it it is surprisingly heavy. I will say this is this is green hickory. I'm getting a getting a wedge here so I can lift it up, and uh, and that way it doesn't quite fight me as much. Um, but this is the way to do it. I, I don't use ramps. Um, I don't use winches or anything like that. Uh, it's just another thing to carry. Try to kind of watch my back there, and we've got it loaded. Now, this is uh, a, another thing that I've had going on, um, and I, I just wasn't sure it was enough for a full video standalone, so I thought I'd splice it onto something else. This is, I That's think, the next day or maybe two days later. Um, this this is a is. really big probably, red oak log, really, really big. I mean, it's, it's probably four or maybe mm. five feet in width at its, at its largest. It's, it's a very... Um, I mean, I guess you could call it a co-dominant trunk, but it, it's it's good wood as opposed to kind of a halfway joined two trunks. Uh, at least it was good wood when it's standing. Now it is, you can hear how hollow that is. It sounds like I'm banging oh, a drum. 
uh, just terrible. And this house, I've uh, I, I've been, um, let's say, I've had this log on my radar for, I don't know, probably four years. Um, some, some person, and I'm going to be pretty vague because <laughs> it's not a great experience for me and I don't want to, you know, kick up dust. But it, some person bought this house and they were going to try and, uh, and renovate it. And this person was just reckless. You know, I, I got a number of other logs and rounds from this person from another county. Uh, they, they bought a house on credit and uh and it's all it's all variable interest and and that that got this person into big trouble but they were buying these houses not even at, at very cheap prices and then they'd have some fly by night tree crew come in and they'd clear cut all the trees and in my area that is the quickest way to get your neighbors to drop a dime on you is you just start cutting all the mature trees don't leave any of them up uh, and so they clear cut probably 10 or 12 mature hardwood trees at this location. And I was really happy about it because I ended up being able to use the lumber, but she got stop work orders and, oh, well, this person. <laughs> and and just said, you know what? I'm gonna take that off my door and send the tree crew back out there. And I, I, I don't know how bad she got fined, but just got nailed. And, uh, and it, it, it got to the point where I was kind of worried. I stopped picking up the wood because I didn't want to cause me trouble with with the county you know I, they, I if they when they say stop work i mean they mean stop work you might never get a permit from these offices they're they're the worst uh they're so arbitrary but if you if they slap you with a stop work order i <clears throat> i mean wow they will be, they will practically have a detective outside your house all hours of the day watching to make sure that you are observing that stop work order but if you want to get a permit to do the work right I mean, good luck. So it's this very, very weird dynamic going on. And here, I, I at this point know that it's rotten, but I'm gonna try and cut a fresh end just in case I can get some good wood out of the very center. But uh, this tree is just so far gone. It's a red oak. And with red oak, especially, well, if you take the bark off, you can about double or triple the time it can sit on the ground before it gets wet. But if you leave the bark on, you know, oh, and somebody's saying hi as I'm, as I'm cutting here. Uh, we've got the, the walkers in the, and you know, and I, I know them. Um, so, <laughs> so just saying hi. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so what was I saying? This, yes, red oak, if you take the bark off of red oak, you're, you're good. I mean, it's, it's almost, it's almost like it can be outside for years and years and years. Ground contact, less time, of course. But if you take the bark off, it'll stay good for a long time. And if you keep it up off the ground, it, it's... Yeah, I, I, with a lot of my red oak, I don't even cover it if I've taken the bar, bark off and it's, and it's up off the ground. Um, but this one, it's just bark on, directly on the ground. I bet it's been rotten through for two years. And it is just... At this point... It's only good for growing mushrooms. But uh, I first came in contact with this log. I actually did do a top cut on the log that was just above this one. I did a top cut for this, this person. And you know, at the time it was like, oh, I need some slabs for a restaurant that I'm opening. And you know, if you, if you cut them up, we'll do this, we'll do that. And, and it turns out, I mean, this person was just a complete scam artist. I mean, just a very, very dishonest, um, very dishonest person. And it got to the point where, um, you know, I, I just, I just cut ties with him and said, you know, I, you know, this is, this is a waste of my time. Um, and look at that, look at how rotten that is. So anyways, they, they got foreclosed on, uh, with this house and it has been vacant. I think two or three people tried to buy this house, but the problem was this, this person that first owned it did a bunch of, subpar work on it. Uh, really, really right. bad work. I'm well, I'm really hit or miss on it. I think it's too far gone. And it's all infested with these big ants, big ones. Um, and why I say this, is why I say I can't save it is because I can't air dry this. You can't air dry this wood. Um, those ants will just 
I mean, you're basically just transporting them to your house. Um, in fact, watch this. Let's see if I can show you this here. Let's see if I can get that in. Oh, there's a, a little salamander. There we go. You know, you look at all this, that's termites, that's ants. Um, you know, that's all kind of, all kind of nasty stuff. So, um, you know, I was really hoping I could do something with this log, but uh, that is uh, between all the moisture. See, look at that, look at that. Yeah, it's, it's rotting the whole way through. So I'm gonna have to leave it. We got these ants here. Let's see if I can, there we go, big, big ants. You know, and they're just all over. Look at that guy. Look at how big he is, he's a full meal. All right, now this log is actually a bummer for me to leave. It's a really big log. And you can see it goes all the way, all the way over there. That's, uh, that's about five feet probably from one end to the other. Uh, it's all of three feet, probably 36 inches one side. And then over here, it's darn near about the same. Uh, this is just, this would have been great lumber really really good slabs but uh, I can't do anything with it now it's too far gone and there's a there's a story behind this log that I might tell but uh, but yeah right here you know I was really hoping to mill this log up but some logs are just too far gone 